Good evening. Uh, good to see everyone tonight. Midweek devotion. Uh, this is the first Wednesday of the month. And as some of you know that we have praise and worship. Good to see everyone. I hope that everyone is having a, a good week, a prosperous week, and a safe week. The devil is busy. He's on the he's on the watch. He never goes to sleep. He wants to make sure that he's not lonely in a, in a real place called hell that's in the real Bible. So, therefore, let us make him real angry tonight by lifting God's name up in praise and worship tonight. So, before we get started... We will have opening prayer. We'll pray and then we'll go into our praise and worship. Dear Father God in heaven, we thank you for this day. Father, we thank you for allowing us to come to this place, dear Father, for a midweek devotion, dear Father, to uh, worship your name, study about your, your son and what you did. Father, uh, we we thank you for, for all that you've done for us. We ask you to help us, Father, to realize the blessing uh, that we have <clears throat> truly being a child of God today. Uh, thank you for helping us, Father. If our eyes have not been opened to all the evil that goes on in this earth, give us time and give us life that we see, dear Father, uh, uh, the things that happen on this earth, Father. We pray that you continue to protect each and every one of us, be without sick, be without shed in. Father, we pray for uh, our churches of Christ all over this land. We pray for those also in the foreign countries, Father, that hear our words uh, on the radio on the computer. Dear Father, we pray that you continue to bless those that go out and sacrifice every week and go out and preach your word. Dear Father, we thank you so much. Uh, be with us sick and the shed in. As I, as I said before, I pray and give thanks and actually be with us through this praise and worship service tonight. We give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> I will read um, a psalm tonight. Hadn't chosen one yet, but uh, kind of forgot the praise and worship service was tonight myself. But nevertheless, all of all the psalms are, are good, so I choose one. It probably won't be a bad one. Probably a good one. Let's see here. Let's look at the last psalms, Psalm 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his, in his sanctuary. Praise Him in the ferment of His power. Praise Him for his mighty, his mighty acts. Praise Him according to His excellent greatness. Praise Him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise Him with the, with the, with the psaltery and harp. Praise Him with the tambourine and dance. Praise Him with string instruments and organ. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Amen. Like the last verse. Use it all in context. Amen. Amen. We want to sing at this time before we have a word of prayer. One of my favorite hymns. Some of you might be the guest in numbers. 437. Where could I go? 437. Living below in this so sinful world, hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation so. Where could I go but to the Lord? Oh, now tell me where could I go? Oh, where could I go? For I'm seeking a refuge for my soul. Oh, needing a friend to save me in the end. Now tell me where could I go but to the Lord? Nay, 
neighbors are kind. I love them, everyone. We get along with sweet accord. But when my soul needs manna from above, now tell me where could I go but to the Lord? Oh, now tell me where could I go? Oh, where could I go? For I'm seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to save me in the end. Now tell me where could I go to the Lord. Life here is grand with friends I love so dear. Comfort I get from God's own word. Yet when I face the chilling hand of death, now tell me where could I go but to the Lord? Oh, now tell me where could I go? Oh, where could I go? For I'm seeking a refuge for my soul, and I'm needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Amen. Amen. This time let us pray for those that incarcerated those that have left the church um, also pray for leadership let's pray dear father God in heaven dear God in heaven we thank you father for uh, giving us this wonderful gift of your son Jesus Christ we thank you for father for uh, giving us the freedom to worship you father in this country we pray for those that have made mistakes in life, Father, and been incarcerated, Father. Yes. We pray, Father, that they might find you before it is too late, some, some way, somehow, that some might be sent their way. I also pray for members, dear Father, that are, uh, of your church, of the body of Christ, who've been incarcerated as well, Father, that you, dear Father, help them, Father, uh, to remember who they are, dear Father. We pray, Father, those for those who also, Father, who have tasted of this good word, Father, and choose and chose to turn back, Father, from you, Father, go back into the world. Dear Father, they know not what they do. Everlasting punishment is not something that is humanly possible that uh, anybody wants, Father, but somehow, some way, people forget about that, Father, and go back to the same old ways, dear Father. Mm -hmm. We pray, Father, that you would help those, Father, who have turned back, Father, to the world, Father, whether it be uh, drugs, uh, 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 sexual behavior, dear Father, lust of money, covetousness, uh, Father, any of these spiritual diseases, Father, we hope and pray, Father, that they would turn back, dear Father, before it is too late, dear Father. Amen. Father, we, we pray, Father, for <coughs> church growth, dear Father, Amen. continually, dear Father, we, so with some churches it's, it seems like it's impossible some men say that it's impossible to find leaders, dear Father. Amen. But, Father, we know that there are leaders everywhere, dear Father, that yes. can be cultivated to, to lead your people, dear Father, upon this earth, dear Father. We know that you've left us examples, Father, of Moses, Joshua, men who lack courage, Father, but you, you went before them, Father, and you won the battles for them, for them Father. And we see ourselves in the infirmities, dear Father, but we pray. Dear Father, that you'd help us, Father, to, to continue to march on, stick with your word, Father, and not try to change it, add to it, or subtract from it, dear Father, that we might be able to encourage men to stand for it, dear Father. Teach and lead, dear Father, uh, the families as well as uh, the friends and neighbors and those on their jobs and in the marketplace, they might be a light that shines, Father, that sits up on a mountain. We thank you so much, Father, for your son once again, dear Father. Pray what you'd be in each, in each and every one that would come up tonight, dear Father, and bless them, Father, that they would have the words 
in their mouth to encourage us tonight. Yes. This is our prayer. We give thanks, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good evening, saints. Good evening. We'll be reading the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verses 1 through 8. Blessed are the undefiled in the way, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies, and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity, they walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with a rightness of heart when I shall have learned thy righteous judgment. I will keep thy statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Amen. Amen. Let's go to God in prayer at this time, saints. Heavenly Father, we come before you, thanking you, Father, for guiding us to this day, Father, in this place. We thank you, Father, for the gift that you've given us, your Son, Father, who died on the cross for us, Father, who took all our sins in his flesh, a work that could not be done by other men or any other man on earth, Father. We thank you, Father. We pray we may always keep this before us and be thankful, Father, for this and not take it for granted. Father, we come asking that you may watch over the saints in this congregation. You may strengthen us, Father, each individually, from the youth to the older, Father, and wisdom, Father, knowledge, and obedience, Father, to all things that you've instructed us. We pray, Father, that we may keep all, all things that your, your son has said, your disciples have said, in remembrance, Father, that we may keep them in time, Father, in the future, of trials, temptations, Father, that we may overcome the wiles of the wicked. We come asking, Father, that you may... Watch over the sick and shut in that are among us, that you may heal them of any infirmities, remove from them, Father, any illness that's in their bodies that's hidden that you, uh, that you can see, Father. They do not grow. Pray that the days may be extended. Pray mercy may be extended toward them, Father. We also pray that they may learn, Father, to show mercy to others, that they may receive the same mercy that you give, Father. Pray, Father, that everyone here. May embrace the mind of Christ. Have patience, Father. For we know without patience we cannot enter into the kingdom of God, Father, according to what your apostles have spoken, Apostle Peter, Father. I pray, Father, we may have discernment, Father, of truth. We pray, Father, that we may continue to seek after you, Father. Have love one toward another. Not have, uh, according to the scriptures, Father, strife, envying, um, or evil communication, Father but always righteous judgment, Father, and uh, see things the way your Son sees them, Father. We ask, Father, that you may watch over all churches of Christ. We ask that we may be one, Father, that your Spirit may continue to work, Father, in the, in the spiritual realm, even, at, even at, as it has been working, Father. We ask that we may be one, Father, that there may be no strife or, or problems, Father, in the brotherhood with... Um, false doctrine with leading saints astray but father that we may all come to an agreement with the scriptures father that we may read and believe and agree with what it says father we ask that you may be with us father and guide us guide us this day and guide us this coming week father till we meet again we ask this in Christ Jesus name amen amen be singing from 159 he's a wonderful savior to me amen if I'm not. If you have it, let's sing. I was lost in sin, but Jesus rescued me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was loved by fear, but Jesus set me free. He's a wonderful Savior to me. For He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. 
He is a wonderful Savior to me. He is a friend so true, so patient and so kind. He is a wonderful Savior to me. Everything I need in Him I always find. He is a wonderful Savior to me. For He is a wonderful Savior to me. He is a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He is a wonderful Savior to me. He is always near to comfort and to cheer. He is a wonderful Savior to me. He forgives my sins. He dries my every tear. He is a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. He's a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Dear grows the love of Jesus day by day. He's a wonderful Savior to me. Sweeter is His grace while pressing on my way. He is a wonderful Savior to me. For He is a wonderful Savior to me. He is a wonderful Savior to me. I was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. He is a wonderful Savior to me. Amen. Praise God. You can say everybody with sacrifice to come up. Praise God. We go now, if you will, with me to the third division of Psalms. Third division of Psalms. Starting at verse 1. Lord, how are they increased that trouble me? Many are they that rise up against me. Many that be which say of my soul, there is no help for him in God. Selah. But thou, O Lord, art a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter up of mine head. I cried unto the Lord with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. Selah. I laid me down and slept. I awakened. For the Lord sustained me. I will not be afraid of ten thousands of people that have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, save me, O my God, for thou hast smitten all mine enemies upon the cheekbone. Thou hast broken the teeth of the ungodly. Salvation belongeth unto the Lord. Thy blessings is upon thy people. Selah. Amen. May the Lord bless those that hear, believe, and do his word. At this time, uh, let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, his blessing, the enlightenment of our souls, the knowledge that was taught us, and baptism administered after our confession and desire to change. Father, we ask you to allow our hearts to be soft enough to receive the grafted word which we are about to hear from our brother Henson that will tell us of the wondrous works and instructions from you. Father God, we ask you to bless this congregation and all the churches of Christ to have an heightened increase in zeal to do the things which are written. Father, you know as well as we and greater than we that the saints in many locales all around the world have decided to alter what you have said that they may feel good about themselves and try to feel good about you. But Father, we know what you have said is sufficient and it is what it is written. And this is the thing, Lord, that you promised us that you would judge us by. You said there would be nothing that would be hidden and if it was hidden, you said it would be brought to light, letting us know there's no surprises at the judgment other than we will think, some of us, 
to cause you to have sorrow upon us, though we did not have respect for your word while on earth. Father, we know this will not happen, so we warn all men, and we hope the zeal of the saints will rise up, causing us to go out and bring in souls, Lord, to bring in those that need to hear, to invite them, to teach them on the spot where they had to hand out a track. Whatever need be, Father, give us the energy and strength ourselves to step forward and at least let our presence be known to you before all men, before all the saints, Lord, that we love you and that we want to be in your kingdom forever. Father, this is our hope and prayer. And Father, if we should achieve this, this would be more than we could have dreamed about on our best of days. Father, we ask you to help us to continue to live the life when we leave this place that others may see the light of Christ in us. It is in Jesus Christ's holy and righteous name we do pray. Amen. God bless you. If you have your song book, go to 444 444. Sing to me of heaven. This is a song everybody's going to want to hear when it's time to die. But you got to get ready now. Got to get ready now. So you can sing it on the way out in the heart. Sing to me of heaven. If you have it, we'll sing all three verses. Let us sing. Sing to me of heaven. Sing that song of peace. From the toils that bind me, it will bring release. Burdens will be lifted that are pressing so showers of great blessings or my heart will flow. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream of its golden glory of its pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me of heaven's sweetest song of all. Sing to me of heaven as I walk alone. Dreaming of the comrades that so long have gone. In a fairer region among the angel throng, they are happy as they sing that old sweet song. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream of its golden glory, of its pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me of heaven's sweetest song of all. Sing to me of heaven tenderly and low. Till the shadows o'er me rise and swiftly go. When my heart is weary, when the day is long, sing to me of heaven, sing that old sweet song. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream of its golden glory, of its pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me of heaven's sweetest song of all. Amen. Sweet, sweet songs of heaven. Glory thereof. But one day, if we keep ourselves consistent, we will see it. And hopefully we'll see it together. You know, the Bible reminds us of a whole bunch of things uh, that we are to be reminded of daily. That's supposed to keep us in focus. I'm reminded of, of Isaiah 4 and 14. And the reason I'm reminded of this scripture, because I see so much deception and so much deceitfulness in the world. And... As I get older and a little bit more wiser and come out of the um, uh, adolescent age of just being stupid and just doing my own thing and, and now doing things God ways, 
in the way that God wants me to do it, I see the world for what it really is. Mm. The Bible says, Isaiah 4 and 14, Therefore hell has enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory and their multitude and their pomp. And he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Into it. Hmm. If you're living uh, for the world right now, you're living and you're having fun, you're partying, having a good time, and you don't know the Lord, this is the time to know the Lord. Mm -hmm. We're in the last days. And so that, therefore we must be ready at all times because the thief comes and we know not when he comes. If, he, if we knew when he would come, then we would be standing there ready and waiting. Some of us would never leave the church if we knew when the Lord would come. Amen. We'd never leave. Some of us would never leave our house. We already know what time the thief is going to come. We'd be waiting there with our pistol, our rifle, our bat, our billy club, or golf club, or whatever. Amen. Ready to have 911 on fast dial because we know exactly when he's going to come. And that's the thing about it. We don't know when he's going to come. I'm reminded of another scripture because it's, it's essential for a Christian to study. The Bible says that we ought to be like uh, uh, people looking for something that, that, that's hid. It's like a needle in a haystack. We should be looking and searching for that needle all the time. How likely is it that you can find a needle in a haystack? Not very, but we should be searching God's word like we're looking for a needle in a haystack. Look at um, uh, John 5 and 39. And some of us, we study, but we don't understand how to study. Amen. We don't understand how to study. Search the scriptures, for in them you think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Amen. You know, I'm not going to have many words tonight. You know, this is praise and worship, and I believe in, in being timed. I believe that the Word of God speaks for itself, and there are few words that I can say behind reading the Scripture, because the words are self-explanatory. There's another Scripture that I think about, and I think it's in the book of Peter. And this is what confuses me so much. I don't know if it confuses you, but it confuses me when I think about it. Um, verse number... Oh, I'm sorry, Second, Second Peter 3 and verse number 16. I don't know if it, it confuses you, but we all have the same Bible. We all have the same Bible. And, of course, these Bibles are in English because we all speak English. Does anybody here speak Spanish fluently? Show by hands. Anybody speak Mandarin Chinese? Raise your hand. Okay, uh, does anybody speak any language besides English in this room. No, nobody's hands. You no, know, we have colleges, places of education that we go so people can get certified to do that. Nowadays, you can learn it on your phone. You can learn it reading books. Mm -hmm. you know, they associate words with pictures when you want to learn how to speak Spanish. And that, that works if you, if you continue to do it. You know, and before you know it, you'll be speaking Spanish. That's right. And you'll be understanding what you say to people. So this book is in English. It's not, in, it's not in any other language. So if I can't speak Spanish or Mandarin Chinese or any other language, how could I read it? How could I read it? So how could I be an expert interpreter of another person's language if I haven't studied it? Mm. So Second, second Peter 3.16 says, As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things, of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also to the other scriptures unto their own destruction people twist God's word if they twist God's word to their own destruction mm -hmm. who do you have to blame if you miss heaven mm -hmm. don't let don't let and I'm not, not, look, no way I'm going to talk about anybody's grandma or grandpa or dad or mama. But don't let them tell you something that's not in the Bible. You're going to be real nice with grandma and grandpa. Grandma, grandpa, that's not true. 
It's hard. It's hard. Sometimes it's hard to be to be stern with older people. And sometimes it really is. You know, it's because they, they they're old. They've been doing a lot more. They you know they, they got a lot more wisdom. They got more gray hair. You know, they talk a lot sweeter now than they used to. Some of them do. Some of them a little rough. You know, but you know you have respect for them. But you got to have respect for God because God is the one who can take the body and the flesh and burn them both. But man can only damage the flesh. He can damage what he can't see. So, so here's another scripture in the same book, uh, verse chapter 1 and verse number 20. 2 Peter 1 and 20. Knowing this, first that no prophecy of the scriptures is of any private interpretation. This is something I tell people. I just cannot get it. You just can't tell people enough. You can't probably interpret the scriptures. Mm-hmm. Let me see your certificate for interpreting language. Let me see it. You cannot interpret a language that you've not yet learned. Mm-hmm. You, you couldn't do it. When Peter on the day of Pentecost stood, stood and spoke, everybody heard him in their own language that they were born in. And Peter was speaking his language. And they heard. See, it was so important for God's word to be heard. Everybody heard. Feel like I'm speaking now and everybody here is different. And I'm speaking just like this. Everybody's saying, yeah, amen. Everybody's like, that's amen in their language, you know. Everybody's saying amen. And they don't, you know, they understand it. So, so, I have a question. Do you have to be a member of the church of Christ to go to heaven? I've heard that before. And when you tell people, when you tell people, yes, they look at you like this hell. Huh. I had a guy one day, I was a guy, old schoolmate, I had saw him somewhere in a store. I think it was a Walmart, one of the small Walmarts. It was years ago. And I hadn't seen him in years, but I knew him. I knew him. But I hadn't always going to see him again. For a long time, so I told him, you know, chit chat for a minute. I said, Man, Church of Christ is the only church in the Bible. He looked at me like that. <laughs> Walked off. <laughs> like I like I had dropped like I had told him something bad. <laughs> I ain't seen him in years, man. You should have been glad to see me. I told him that he walked off. <laughs> All right. All right. I mean, I went on and got what I had to get. I don't know what I was doing. Maybe I was getting some chicken. Maybe I was getting something to eat. Maybe I was working. I forgot. But I didn't stop eating because he didn't believe what I said. No, no, thank you. So, I want to know, can flesh and blood inherit the kingdom of heaven? And so, and so, let's get an answer to the question that I'm asking. Look at Matthew. And I'm not going to be long. And I'm just, we're, we're talking about God's word tonight. Wednesday night. We'll try to keep it real simple. Real simple. Short and sweet. Matthew 16. In verse number 17. Through 19. And Simon Peter. Well you know what you can get a little bit more context. If you want to go up to read verse 13. It says. When Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples saying. Where do men say that I the son of man. I mean, who, whom do men say the son of, I the son of man am? And they said, some say thou art John the Baptist. You know, a lot of people think now that obviously, because there are many Baptists in the world, they think Christ is John the Baptist. Obviously, because they're Baptists. I mean, I can't see no other reason why you would be a Baptist. John said he's John the Baptist because he baptized. If you say... John the truck driver. You know, I was thinking about this today. If you say John the truck driver, because we have groups, splinter groups all over the world, anybody could will believe something in the world. That's why, you know, don't be afraid to go out and be an entrepreneur because what you start, somebody gonna believe it. Somebody gonna come get it. They're gonna, somebody gonna come by. If there's a guy named John the Baptist, he started his John the truck driver, he started a website. He said, I'm John the, I'm John the truck driver. And I'm going to start an ch- a, a online church. And it's going to have a symbol of a, a truck right there. Uh, a truck driver missionary Baptist church. A trucker's missionary Baptist church. One of these days, John going to die. And they're going to be members of a truck driver uh, missionary Baptist church. He going to die. But 
But there gonna be people sitting up in there. And you got to almost pull their teeth out and tell them that he's wrong. That he didn't started something. He didn't started something. It's just like having those two it's just like having those two uh those two gold gold statues that Jeroboam made. Because later on, when all those people die at John Truck Drive Baptist Church, and all the that twenty years down the road no kids join, who started this church? Who did who did this? Who did that? Well, your 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 great grandfather he started it. He started it in, in, in eighteen fifty, you know, and he used to drive a truck, but and then he used to start he used to preach at the truck stops. And before you know it he had a trailer, had a truck on the side and but you know telling the story. But is that in the Bible? See flesh and blood cannot enter into heaven. Amen. That's a fleshly story because it's his own. Nobody here can read that in the Bible. So right here, right here, he says, When Jesus came unto the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men whom do men say that I the Son of Man am? And they said, Some say thou John the Baptist. John baptized, that's why he's the name of Baptist. Some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah. Of one of the prophets. Now that's what other people said. But if, if he's turned to his own disciples. And they don't know who he is. Well we're really in trouble. We're really in trouble. So it said. He said unto them. But. He says but. That's a good but. Whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said. Thou art the Christ. The son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him. Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Man. See, you can't get this. You can't get this without somebody knowing, or somebody who's spiritual, who's been baptized, who's heard the gospel, who's a member of the Church of Christ. Anybody can say this, but you have to believe it. You have to believe it and grab it Amen. and live by it. You know, I, I, you know, I don't know if I said this before. Some of y'all may know. You say, well, that brother preached the same message he preached before. If I say this. Uh, uh, tell the truth, brother. But, you know, years ago, I used to say Amway. Years ago, I used to say Amway. I think it's still going on, but I know that's another name now. But I know we used to have that board. You used to draw them circles. Yes. <laughs> yes. Somebody remember? Yes, sir. And they had to teach you that thing. Yes, yes. Everybody had to know it. Yes, sir. If you were going to make money, you had to go to a meeting and learn how to draw them circles. Mm -hmm. And you had to draw circles, mm. and you had to draw these circles around circles, big circles, a little circle. You know, it was network marketing. It was mm. network marketing. If you didn't draw them circles, you weren't finna get paid. Mm. No, you weren't finna get paid. So you had to know the plan. Mm -hmm. You had to know the plan. Right. So Peter, on the day of Pentecost, did not know the plan. Mm. He didn't even know the plan. But all he did, and all those other disciples. Who, who waited at Jerusalem, stayed there because Jesus said, stay there. That's right. He said, stay. Don't leave. He said, don't leave. See, see, when God tells you to do something, that's what you got to do. So, we've been told and we've been taught after our conversion from the world into the spiritual world, God opened our eyes. He opened our eyes. And we believe, we believe, we believe that He opened our eyes because not only did we believe, but we obeyed what he said do. Look at Acts. We went in Acts 2 and verse number 38 right quick. Because it's very important. Acts 2 and 38. Peter said right here. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of, sin, of your sins. Of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. See, see, this is these these are spirit. These are words that lead us that tell us what to do. Mm -hmm. So there are some people that say you don't need baptism. What scripture is that? You don't need baptism. All you have to do is believe, baby. All you got to do is believe. You know, you read uh, 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 Ephesians two and eight. I believe it says that hey, you're saved by grace. Mm -hmm. You're saved by grace. Grace alone. That's what it says. Well, so how are you saved by grace alone when you can read this scripture right here? You have to tear this scripture out or you don't have understanding. The proper understanding. You don't have the proper understanding. So you have to take all of God's counsel. You got to know how to rightly divide. 
You got to know how to understand that the Old Testament is now old and the New Testament is new. But we're still in the last times and we can't mix them up. We can't mix them up. So, so look at look at look at um uh, First Corinthians one fifty. We're gonna look at two more scriptures, three more scriptures. I promise you, we're gonna look at the scriptures, but in its context, it's a more some more scriptures in there. But we're gonna look at three more, and we'll be done. First uh, Corinthians fifteen and fifty. So we see that flesh and blood did not reveal truth to Peter. It came from God. God is the only one who can reveal truth to us. Amen. And that's why we have to look to the word of God. Because we can't do it without him. Uh, 15 and 50. And it says. Now this I say brethren. That flesh and blood cannot, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither do corruption inherit in corruption. Look at John 3. And this does not, this flies over the head of people who are in carnality, who are carnal minded. It flies over their heads. Because no matter how much you tell them, they say, how, how is that? How is, how, is, how is the scripture you're talking about applying to me? Look at John 3 and verse number 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou do it except God be with him. Absolutely true. And he does call Jesus master. He, so he's right. But just everybody who calls him master, that, that means you don't, that, that doesn't mean you are, you're a child of God. Doesn't mean you're you are, you are in the right relationship with God. Verse 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Man got to be born again. He cannot see. Spiritual. He can't have, he doesn't have spiritual eyes to see. Because the word of God is simply to be to read it and say it. Read it and say it. That's it. There's so many people now, if you look on cable, you go up to those upper channels right there, you got so many people on there 24 hours a day. The devil is indoctrinating people 24 hours a day. That's right. You go in and buy you a, a handkerchief that you can touch, they'll send it to you. Peter Popoff will send you a handkerchief mm -hmm. to your house. It's going to be a holy, he's going to send you a, a handkerchief that Paul touched. You know, how they, you know how they make bread nowadays in some of these places up in New York? They got this old bread that was made in 1869. They keep it somewhere. I don't know, but it's got the yeast. It's got the, the, the formula that grandpa and grandma made. And they keep a little bit of it. And they put it in each lump of dough. So it'll, so it'll look like the same. It'll taste like the same bread. Y'all didn't know that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The same. Oh, my gosh. The same bread. The same dough that they used back in 1860. They still got a little piece of it that they tear out and put in the rest of it. And let it rise. Mm. Oh yeah, all right. See, you you can't. It's one thing you can't do. I see a lot of looks. You can't lie in here. You can't lie in here. Yeah. Go find out for yourself. Go Google and ask me. Go Google and ask me when you leave. If Google lying, then I'm lying. Because mm. it's a new dictionary. It's the new Webster's of the day. And I asked it everything, just not everything. I asked it a whole lot of stuff, and it comes up pretty, pretty, pretty accurate. Pretty accurate. Save yourself some gas. Don't have to run around. You got ask Google. It'll tell you. So, so he could not even see. Because why? Because he had not been born of the spirit and of the water. Boy, oh, I love that. Got to be born of the spirit and the water. So those people who don't believe in baptism, they can't see. That's why it's so. That's why that they're so foggy when you turn them on on Sunday morning, and the place is full, and the guy in the middle is talking about some good story because he says, "I'm not even say the name." Let me tell you a little story before we get started. That's what it's all about from the front to the, to the back. A story. A little story about God, how God is going to bless you. And how you're going to get the reward. And how he's not going to let you down. He's, he's he got your back. That's a good story. Keep on believing that. 
in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the hole in the ground or the hole wherever it is, it's steady going to get larger every time he talks about that, because the devil's serious. Yes, he's a deceiver. I mean, let me tell you what he does. Uh, the next few minutes, he. Y'all ever seen these movies? And I don't know if you've seen them, but I'm I'm, I'm just going to give you a, 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 maybe a little bit of something. There's a lot of movies I see. I, you see the plot. You see the evil person. What he does, he wants to appear not to be evil. Now in the movies, he may be a politician or something, or he may be a rich guy. He just may be a, a guy who wants power. And this is how the devil does it. He starts some commotion. He throws a rock over there. And that rock hits somebody. And he's got somebody over there that's working for him that he acts like he doesn't know. Mm -hmm. Acts like he doesn't know him. He throws a rock over there because he needs to have power. He needs to have some type of fear or something going on that, so people can look to him to protect them. Mm -hmm. Throws a rock over there, hits somebody. I mean, if somebody falls out, maybe he kills somebody and gets his, his boy to kill somebody. And maybe he's an attorney. And now that family needs a lawyer. Now he's he's got a he's got a client. And I'm just saying that's you know he's got a client because at first he was starving. I didn't have any client, but he had to kill somebody to get people to come to him. Mm. See that's deception. That's right. That's deception. <coughs> but a lot of people don't understand that we fall into it. We go get the lawyer. We're the ones going to get the lawyer. Mm. Oh yes, yes, because somebody has to be deceived. The people that come to the lawyer. They don't know who did it, but they, they come to the man who did it, and they're going to give him money. And he's the one who started the mess. This is how, this is how the devil works. I'm telling you. Be careful. We have to be, we have, the Bible says the, the children of the world are smarter than us. They were smarter than us. But remember something. You came from the world. You came out of the world. Look at, look at Matthew right quick. You came out of the world. We, we came out of the world. So I know some of us can't forget. Every now and then we slip up and, and go back and remember. Oh, you know what? I don't want that guy. To, I don't want that guy to come back out. But you know that you had some skills when you're in the world. I want to, I'm not saying. I'm not telling you to retain those skills, but I'm telling you to be careful, and I'm telling you to remember some of the things that you did and watch out. Look at look at look at uh, Matthew 10 verse number 16. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and, and, and harmless as doves. So what are they saying? You, you know what a, what, a, what a serpent is? He said, but he says, be wise as a serpent, but be harmless as a dove. You know, a serpent, but he, he creeps around. And he watches. He be, he's so smart. He waits. He slits through the little bushes before you know it. You say, oh, something bit me. Uh -huh. Didn't even know it. Didn't even know it. That's why I heard a brother say, but Steve say he killed the snake because it was a baby snake. Because he was going to be a big snake one day. Well, I thought about that this week. I said, you know what? That's how the devil is. If you don't get a joker, it's like Ahab when they went, not Ahab, but when Saul and went, they were supposed to kill everything in, in the city and the king too. And he brought back the king, cow, sheep, and whatever else. And, uh, and Samuel heard him. He said, didn't the Lord tell you to go and take care of that business? And you brought back the devil with you? And then Samuel had to take care of his business for him. Because he knew those, those, little, those little bad kids going to grow up one day. Guess what? Those are going to be your enemies. That's, right. That's what he said. That's what he meant. It's going to be your enemy. Right. So, so therefore... I want to go to Romans 5 and 8 quickly because I'm going to come to a close. We got to have the Spirit of God. See, those that cannot see, those cannot see, they don't have the Spirit of God. Because they've forsaken the water. They've told you that I don't need the water. All you got to do is believe. That's all you got to do. Just, just, don't, just, just, just believe you don't need the water. Well, let's see. John the Baptist was told that you need to be, you need to have the water and the spirit. That's two right there. So we find that in, in Acts 2 and 38. We understand that he told them to be baptized, which water is needed. Then 
Uh, Jesus told Nicodemus that water and the spirit, without them you cannot see. There are two people to tell you about water. So, so I don't know what to tell anybody that listens to this that believes that they can be saved without it. You're not saved. Amen. You're not. So, therefore, Romans 8. Romans 8, why is it so important? Why is it so important? Because God told you to do it. That should be enough. You find out later on after you get back, after you do it, then you understand. Especially at the end when you stand before, before God in judgment, you'll really understand it then. When he tells you to depart from me, I never knew you. Oh my goodness, man. That, that's some that's sad words to hear. Sad words to hear. Look at, look at um, um, Romans 8. Uh, verse number one. There is therefore no none. Th there is therefore none. No con condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Yes. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Mm. See, but you can't get to that without water. Right. Now let somebody tell you that if you don't get to it without water, you can read this all day long in any building in the world that doesn't say Church of Christ, and some of them that say Church of Christ, you're not going to get to it without the water. Right. I'm telling you. Don't let some man tell you that you can get in any kind of way. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemned sin, in the flesh. He says that. Verse 4. That the righteousness of the law. Might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh. But after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh. Do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after. They that are after the spirit. The things of the spirit. For to be carnally. Carnally minded. Is death. But to be spiritually minded. Is life and peace. Spiritually minded. We're led by the Spirit of God. Daily. Daily when you walk, you think about the Old Testament. You think about your old brother and your old saints and how they walk. Mm -hmm. They walk in obedience and some of them walk in disobedience. You think about a story. You think about something they did to avoid sin. To be cleared of sin. And then you, you do something similar today. Bring it home today. And, and, and you, you do that by the Spirit. Going to the New Testament. Reading and studying it and understanding how to avoid sin. Mm -hmm. How to avoid sin. Verse 7 says, because the cardinal mind is enmity against God. Look up that word enmity. It's kind of vague when you look it up in the Greek. But if you look it up, you know, and when you look it up, and you look at just plain Webster's, just Google it. It's gonna go, it's, it, it says it's something about uh, uh, having something against, somewhat against you. God has something against you. Against you if you're in the flesh. Yes. He does. Against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. See a fleshly person. A cardinal mind cannot be subject to God. Cannot. If you know. If you know. That a person. And I know you guys see it all the time. I'm closing right here. You know you see now that people go to jail. And what they do is they have. They put everybody in. I, I, I haven't been. I ain't been down there. I've been to jail before, y'all, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, for, for tickets way back in the day. Mm -hmm. I remember, I know I may have told y'all this before. Uh, gave, my mom, gave my mom some money to pay a ticket. She went and bought some groceries with the money. And I went down there to pay another ticket. And I was short. Mm -hmm. The guy said, come back, come here. Went back there. Did not get out. You, you go back there? Not getting out, but back then they didn't have surcharges and things of that nature. You paid the ticket, and that was it. Now they got you on the string for a year or two or whatever. But they take you down now. I look at the news now. They 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 had you in they had you in the orange uniform, and they bring you before this guy sitting behind this seat, and then they have a, this 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 this, this uh, uh, TV screen behind you. And um, that's probably the arraignment or whatever it is. But when they get you to court, you always see somebody bring a guy in. See, this is, I'm trying to relate this to this. See, God is, Christ is our mediator between God. So, so they bring this guy in, and this guy can't even speak. He got to have a, he got to have a court appointed attorney to speak for right. him. Amen. You can't speak in our courts, and I'll tell you this why: because you're a foreigner. That's 
Amen. I'm just telling you right now, you're a foreigner in this country. You can't speak in the court. So that's why they got this guy to speak for you. You, got, you think you little black guys getting beat up on corners? You think it's uh, you think it's you think that's the plan of a man? That's the plan of the devil. You want to see little black little black spiritual bodies in hell with him mm -hmm. when he's there. So I'm telling you right now, don't get in trouble. Don't get entangled in that. Mm -hmm. Because if you do, if you do get entangled, you probably would never get out. Mm -hmm. If you got a lot of money. And if you know somebody, and maybe maybe this is a little bit different, you know. Maybe you might be maybe to get out, but you know somebody in high places? You know Jesus. He's telling you what not to do. Mm -hmm. That's right. He's telling us what not to do. You cannot speak in a court. So don't do nothing, don't do anything wrong because somebody's gonna be able to speak it for you. You're a ward of this world. So well, therefore, therefore, I'm not gonna go to John six and sixty eight. John six and sixty three. I just let me let me just read it and we'll stop. I wanna read it right quick because John six and sixty three. I read that, that, that verse right there. John 6 and 63 says, It is the spirit that quickened the flesh. It is the spirit that quickened. The flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we need to hold fast to God's word. Today, just for sake of the, the recording, uh, uh, you can become a Christian by faith in God. Uh, Romans ten seventeen, yeah, belief, belief in the gospel of God. Mark sixteen sixteen. I love that scripture because it's simple. He that believeth in is baptized shall be saved. You know, one must be able to understand that he must confess who Christ is, like the eunuch did in Acts eight and thirty six. That I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. People, if you haven't been baptized, you can make that confession all you want, but you don't really believe it because you haven't did what God requires for you to do. To complete in your your birth, your birth, and the, therefore repentance is necessary. Uh, somebody said you got to make a hundred and eighty degree turn. Well, you know you got to make a. I guess a. a somebody said you got to make a three sixty. Which one? Which one do you think you got to make? You think it's hundred and eighty? You got to turn from whatever it is. Whatever it is, just turn from whatever you're doing wrong. If you're in a denomination, you need to get out because you're going to be locked up. You can be locked up eternally. Uh, once you make that, once you repent, you have to you have to be baptized. We saw we saw that in Acts two and thirty eight. We saw that God told Nicodemus that without the water and without the, the spirit, he cannot see. He cannot see. I can see better with these glasses when I put them on. I still can see, but these glasses help me see better. You know, they they, they have a they have a reason to help me see better. So so uh, therefore, once uh, you have been baptized, God adds you to the body. Why would he add anybody else to any other body? That would be confusing to him. The Bible says the water, the spirit, uh, the water, the spirit, and the blood. I believe that's what it says. And they all agree as one. They all agree. So you're going to be standing up there talking about, well, you know, Lord, man, uh, man, I, I was just in my aunt, man, and I was listening to preaching, and real, man, he told me, man, this is what I had to do, this is what I did. Well, well, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be sad, Amen. but you will be there with Reb and preach forever. So therefore, if you're a member of the body of Christ, if you're a member of the body of Christ, then you also if you if you need prayer, you can stand up and, and you can stand up and ask for prayer. You need to repent. I hope that you've done that. But if you need to stand up and ask for anything at this time, you can at this time. That the message is yours. Stand up and have a, a song. Oh, come.